Welcome back everybody. It is February 26, 2022 and we are continuing our series. My favorite thing about we are almost done and today we are doing 2nd and 3rd John and Jude. Our scripture is 2nd John verse 1 through 6 and this is what it says. To the elder, to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth. Because of the truth, which lives in us and will be with us forever, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I am not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we are coming to the end of our year-long trip through the Bible. Thank you for your inspiration. Thank you for coming and walking beside us as we have taken this journey. Lord, I pray that we will continue to walk in the truth that we have discovered in this past year. In Jesus' name, amen. Here is the list of scriptures that we will cover today. And as always, I encourage you to go to the PDF version for the notes. Okay. Today we're going to combine these three books, 2nd, 3rd John, and Jude. Partly because they're short, but also because they share a common thread. All three congregations were facing a crisis. The believers were in danger from other Christians whose only goal was to deceive, corrupt, and divide, much like 1 John last week, much like 2 Peter. We could actually have probably lumped those all together because they were dealing with much of the same subject matter. But today we're just joining these three. Here's what 2 John has to say. Many deceivers who do, do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Okay, so that's 2 John. 3 John, so this is to a different church, I wrote to the church about Diotrephes, who loves to be first, will have nothing to do with him, loves to gossip maliciously, he refuses to welcome the brothers, he stops also, he stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. So there's a specific person that we're talking about in 3 John and in Jude. This is what he says. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of God into a license for immorality, deny that Jesus Christ is our only Savior and Lord. These men speak abusively. They are grumblers, fault finders, Oh, they have own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. I'm sure we know no Christians like that. But dear friends, he says, Jude says, remember that what the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold when they said to you, in the last times there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions. These are the men who divide you. Okay, and Jude quoted 
2 Peter there. It is especially devastating to have to come to the realization that there are Christians who claim Jesus, who claim to be born again, but who actually have completely different intentions and follow a different leader. Peter said the way to combat these attacks are to know they're coming. There is a villain in the story. And because there's a villain in the story, it's important to grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus. That's what Peter said. In his first letter, John said, don't just buy what somebody's selling, test it, which is what we talked about last week. Don't just buy it, test it. Know the villain is coming. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus. Which brings us to my favorite thing about 2nd and 3rd John and Jude, and that is this, walking in truth and love. We read, read this already, but it pays to read it again. 2nd John, the elder to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. Not I only, but also who know all who know the truth because of the truth which lives in us and we will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son will be with us in truth and love. It has given me great joy to find that some of your children are walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. And now, dear lady, I'm not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, he, his command is that you walk in love. Third John says this, the elder, to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy to have some brothers come and tell us about your faithfulness to the truth and how you continue to walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And Jude says this, but you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. Now Jude phrased it slightly differently, but the idea is the same. Keep growing. Keep strengthening your truth and love muscles which echoes Peter's counsel in his second letter. Just like Peter's instruction to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus indicates intentional activity, walking in the, walking in the truth and love indicates forward progress, going in a specific direction. It describes the entirety of a person's life. It's continual movement forward in a love of the truth, Jesus, which leads to love as a lifestyle. Neither John nor Jude was talking about walking in or adhering to a set of doctrines, something that we would call truth. They are talking about a person. They are talking about walking in the truth that is Jesus and the love of God as found in Jesus. Walking in the truth and in love. Psalm 26 says, Test me, O Lord, and try me, 
Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is ever before me, and I walk continually in your truth. Psalm 85, love and truth will meet. Justice and peace will kiss. Psalm 86, teach me, O Lord, your way, that I may walk in your truth, single-hearted and revering your name. Psalm 119, through all generations, your truth endures, fixed to stand firm like the earth. John 14, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 1. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 1 John 3 1. How great is the love! The Father has lavished on us that we should be called His children. And again, this is how we know what love is. Christ laid down His life. And finally, chapter 4 of 1 John. This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. So when you put it all together, it reads like this. Know that there is a villain and that he has followers, even if they look like sheep. Don't buy what someone is selling. Test everything. And grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus and walk in the truth that is Jesus and the love of God is found in Jesus. Jude concludes by saying this, to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all the ages, now and forevermore. Amen. And that's why walking in the truth and in love is my favorite thing about Second and Third John and Jude. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, Sometimes knowing that there is a villain is hard because the world tells us there isn't one. Sometimes asking the important questions are hard because we don't know what to ask. Sometimes we just buy what somebody's selling because it sounds good. Sometimes we sit on our couches, yet expect somehow to be faithful by osmosis. But your scriptures are pretty clear. You need to know there's a villain, and he has followers, even if they look like sheep. We need to test everything, and we need to get off the couch and we need to grow in you, and we need to grow in our knowledge, and we need to walk as you walked, and love as you loved, and embrace, and love, and dig deep down into the truth that is Jesus. That's how we will survive the attacks of the villain. 
you have promised to give us your armor. You have promised to walk beside us. You have promised that we don't have to try and do it alone. And in the end, there is victory in you. Thank you for that, dear Jesus. Amen. Thanks, everybody. That's it. Next week is Revelation, our final book in our series, My Favorite Thing About. So we'll see you then. Bye.